So, now we know Mona Lisa smile was important, but do you think Leonardo invented the basic happy face? No, of course not. Okay, how about this one? The horseless carriage, or as we'd call it, a car. I'll give you a sack, so I can groove on this killer gem for a while. Amazingly, this is a yes. Leo designed this thing to run on springs, not on a modern engine. He noticed that horses were easily scared in battle. If he could make something to move troops without a horse it would be a huge advantage. Like many of Leo's ideas, this one was never actually made, just designed. How about the parachute? Yeah, designed this one too. Okay, so that was pretty crazy, what about a hang glider? Even crazier, but yes. Okay, so obviously he liked flying machines. But do you think he could have possibly designed a helicopter 500 years ago? Believe it or not, he did. Again, he never actually made it, but he definitely had the plans for it. Okay, fine Mr. Smarty Pants, you designed a helicopter. But did you design a boat to carry it? Nope, this one didn't didn't do. Leo didn't seem to do much with boats at all, I guess they were just too simple for him. Leonardo pursued many obsessions, but the greatest of all was flight. Another bird. Stormholders will think you're mad. Oh, no, no, no. He's been paid what he asked for the birds. A bird should be able to do what its nature dictates, which is to fly. So should a man, if he has a mind to take wing. Once, Once you, you have, have tested, tested flight, flight, you will forever walk the world with, with your, your eyes turned skyward. skyward. For there you have been. And they will always long to return. Leonardo envisioned a number of designs for flight, including an ornithopter, a machine powered by a man flapping great wings like a bird. But could he possibly achieve flight with any of his designs? There are pages packed with research and ideas. One of Leonardo's concepts was said to have inspired Sikorsky to lead the world in helicopter design. And it seems Leonardo did have a fantasy of one day trying out these machines for himself. But perhaps the most achievable of the time was this intriguing design for what is apparently the world's first controlled glider. But would it have worked? Had Leonardo really designed a practical flying machine hundreds of years before anyone else? We asked designer and inventor Simon Sanderson to build the glider for us. I'm pretty certain we can get this to fly. Uh, the main question is how stably we can get it to fly. Simon and Robbie take the glider to Italy, to the hills where Leonardo hoped to see it launched. It's a dangerous business testing untried flying machines, even from low hills like these. If Robbie crashes from as little as 30 feet off the ground, he risks serious injury. I crashed it again. The glider was definitely unstable. So Simon went back to Leonardo's notes for inspiration. Look at how birds fly. How they use both their wings and their tail to stop them falling. If we could get a little tail, just put it on the back here. Stick that on there. And that will just keep it in a straight line. So that'll then give us the directional stability, stability. so that hopefully stop it 
Just down digging down this edge in. Oh, okay. Right. I think we're gonna yeah, have some flights. But will this new tail make the crucial difference? It was now all or nothing. Robbie has raised the stakes. He's going to fly off a much steeper hill. It'll give him more chance of getting airborne. But if he crashes, this time the consequences will be grave. It's the first time ever one of Leonardo's flying machines has successfully taken to the air. A triumph. Well done, Simon! Well done, Robbie! How about machine guns? You know, like pew pew pew, bang bang and all that? <laughs> yep, he did that too. Okay, come on now Mr. Roden, now you're just being ridiculous. You expect us to believe that Leo could have invented a tank when there were no cars, no engines and barely any guns? I mean that's just... Okay fine, Leo was amazing. I get it. Jeez. Okay, yeah, sure. He made a robot. Why not? I mean so what, if scientists are barely making them now? Yes, I'm being sarcastic. Of course he didn't make a robot. Oh wait, he did. That's it, I'm done with this game. Within hours of the old man's death, Da Vinci descends into the cavernous morgue to dismantle nature's ultimate machine. We might be surprised that Leonardo's uh, dissection of human corpses wasn't frowned on by the church of his time. That seems, though, to be more of a modern concept and modern prescription. Here, he will make an astonishing discovery, centuries ahead of its time. I conducted an autopsy in order to determine the cause of such a peaceful death and found that it was caused by the failure of blood flowing into the artery that feeds the heart and other lower members which I found withered and shrunk. In 1507, Leonardo makes history's first description of arteriosclerosis by comparing the circulatory system of the elderly man with that of a child's. And we have to try to imagine 500 years ago what it would have been like to work on an autopsy without the benefit of good lighting or good uh, preservation of the material. The smell must have been awful. Under challenging conditions, Leonardo invents an entirely new way of seeing. Later, his cross-sections and exploded diagrams will profoundly influence the modern method of visualizing anatomy and machinery. His code, like the man himself, becomes mature. Experimentation continues to be the primary engine in his effort to achieve what no one else could. I am inspired by the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must act on it. Being willing is not enough. We must do. That is it for the super awesome Renaissance Notes. I hope you've learned some new things. I know I have.